Oh. Today we're building a simple module that takes left and right patch cables and puts it out to something a normal speaker can use. To do this, we're using the SAMD51 as the brain, a standard audio jack, a volume knob, and a capacitor to make the audio jack happy. So let's get started with the breadboard. If you're new to electronics, the connections look like this. To get started, let's put everything in its own little area on the breadboard. Now we need to connect stuff, starting with ground to the ground rail, analog out to the volume knob, then the volume knob splits between the other two pins, one to ground and one to our capacitor. Make sure our capacitor is the right way, that, that would be bad. The audio jack needs sleeve and ring two to ground, then tip and ring two are left and right. To simplify right now, I'm gonna tie left and right together. Nice, now I just need some code. This chip uses CircuitPython, which is like Python, but for circuits. I should have done this earlier, but here I'm testing how fast this chip can sample audio. Ideally, it's 44,100 hertz. This should hopefully give me a number less than one. That's not good. I don't know. Okay, so eight hours have passed and I figured it out. CircuitPython is very cautious, therefore slow. But I can make my own, more dangerous version and call it V instead of value? Sure. And let's try again. Yeah, good enough. Now I'll change the code to do a simple test. This will hopefully generate a sawtooth waveform that looks like this. Fingers crossed. It's not much, but that does mean that it works. Now that we've proved the concept, we can build the real thing. Let's rearrange our board a little bit. Now we can add our patch cable jacks and arrange everything as we want it in our box. I'm using an eyeliner pencil here to mark the lid for where our holes should be. It's not the most accurate, but it'll probably be good enough. I just kind of guess for the audio jack. Okay, so this is the first time I've ever drilled through metal, so I feel like I'm missing something. Please leave some drilling advice in the comments. Please.
Rounding out the edges went well, at least. A uh, quick fit check here. And I did a bad job. Okay, good enough. Now to give it a nice paint job. It looks kind of bad, but after a few coats. I almost forgot the micro USB port. Do that quick. There has to be a better way of doing this. Kind of scary, but I'm fine. Yeah, I do a pretty bad job with this. But is it good enough? Yeah, it fits. Cool. Now we just need to redo the wiring and fit it in the box. I'm only wiring in the left channel here due to laziness. I didn't think about how the audio jack will connect to all of this, so it's time to solder. Originally I was going to make all the wiring really neat, but it was taking way too long. So I just kind of bent everything out of the way, and it works. And now the final assembly. I couldn't figure out how to secure the audio jack to the cover, so I'm just going to keep the cable plugged in all the time. Just crunch everything in there. Tighten everything down. And hey, that looks pretty good. But does it still work? Ah, uh, no. Okay. I thought this was going to take hours to track down, but it was actually pretty easy. As it turns out, I just didn't plug the audio jack in enough. Give it another try, and... There we go. I can't test the patch cable input because I don't have any other modules yet, so tune in next episode for that. Next up is a voltage controlled oscillator, or VCO. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.